Hello, good morning. So today is uh, Tuesday the 9th of April and I'm going to take you through sort of the questions that I've received so far and then jump into um, some of the answers. So the first one we've got is I like your quick wins. Oh, sorry, I have got the most quickie chair. <laughs> so um, the first question is I like your quick wins um, and I'm doing it daily now I feel ready to add something else in what would you suggest now if you've been pretty consistent on the sort of the quick wins and obviously the quick wins is uh, for those of you who are looking to start making some changes in your life but don't have a huge amount of time at the moment want to kind of build um, build on the sort of uh, the commitment and get yourself into the flow of making these changes before diving into the full sort of foundation piece and the next level. So I would say the first thing to add in would be thought monitoring as that is the one of a, a key key element in um, transforming your life is really being able to understand what are you thinking subconsciously, unconsciously, you know, what's the little voice in your head? Are you feeling positive? What does your body feel like? So it's kind of like, it's not just thought monitoring. What also would be helpful is body monitoring. So am I feeling stressed right now? Having little check-ins to think, um, how do I feel right now? Do I feel at peace? Can I choose to feel relaxed? Can I choose to see that nothing's wrong in this moment? Can I choose to feel that this is good in this moment? Can I choose to feel happy and excited for these moments? So it's often that we get stuck in such, and we're really in busy lives trying to juggle so many different things that it is really hard to break that habit. So it's great that you started on the quick wins. Adding the next thing in would really be thought monitoring and then bodily check-ins. Um, and so again, I would say, you know, throughout your day, and and to, in order to, to do this, it's something that eventually you won't need to set reminders for. It's something that you'll just get into the habit of um, checking in with yourself, thinking, oh, and acknowledging that you're having certain feelings and certain thoughts. But at the beginning, it's probably worth, uh, whether it is setting a reminder on your phone, whether it's carrying a little notepad notepad around with you and just or on your phone jotting down in the notes some of the repetitive or you know cycles of thinking that you get stuck in uh, during the day or just if that if you're finding that really hard just focus on the feeling so how are you feeling I'm feeling stressed or I'm feeling worried or anxious and then diving into that a little bit I'd really recommend you do that Another part would be, say once you've done that, um, would be start watching some of the elements in the next class, the foundations, and then also dependent on how much you can juggle or how much you are wanting to uh, just to, to get dedicate to this, reading uh, or listening to an audio book is for me, it's, I love learning, so it's, it doesn't feel like a hassle, it doesn't feel like um, uh, work it feels like enjoyment for me so dependent on where you're at um, or your uh, interest in reading or listening to books there's some of the books that I'd recommend so the work by um, oh it's actually Katie Byron not Byron Katie <laughs> by Katie Byron and uh, that really that kind of um, that really deals with the emotional side of things so um, some of the challenges, the past traumas that you might have and how best to, to deal with that. Um, another book would be You Are the Placebo by Joe Dispenza and that's more focused to mindset and health and uh, Change Your Paradigm, Change Your Life by Bob Proctor. That again is is great and for the mindset to so dependent on what it is that you're looking to support within your journey. Um, those are the three books I would would start with. So I hope that's given you a kind of uh, a good view of uh, or a good answer to your question. So question number two, um, could you elaborate on the role of visualization in manifesting or creating change? Um, 
and again, I've, I've heard somebody say this about something completely different and it's really relevant to, to manifesting. It isn't just one thing. So if you're baking a cake or a cookie, it's not the baking powder, it's not the eggs, it's not the milk, it's not the flour. Um, they're all needed. But, and uh, with, with cr conscious creating, it isn't a standalone thing. They all have different layers and different supporting uh, flows into other areas. So, for example, with uh, visualization, uh, you, uh, you'll you find it difficult to visualize something that you don't believe you're even capable of. So a lot of the time we have these limiting beliefs, which essentially are our, our ceiling. Sorry, again, there's my, my chair. Um, so we often have these, uh, like a ceiling point where we, for example, we can use um, income or salary. So you might think you are only able to earn a certain amount. And if you were to triple that that value and someone was to say, oh, go and get a job and, and triple that, that value, you'd be like, no, 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 that's not even possible. I can't do that. Um, you might not say those words, your feelings, your thoughts will have that uh, or could have that limiting belief. So part of visualization is really to help you break out of your limiting beliefs or subconscious limiting beliefs. It's not often that we, we walk around <laughs> naming and labeling that we've got these um, limiting beliefs, but we do. We all have blind spots. We all have um, limiting beliefs because we are creating our reality and we have the life we have right now and the life we have right now if it's not exactly what we want it doesn't have to be terrible but if it's not exactly what we would like it's because there's often some um there's often some limiting beliefs that are surrounding and supporting us as as our structures so we have to be able to see it before um before we can believe it's even possible for us and before we can get in alignment with it. So visualization really does help in uh, identifying some of the challenges that we might have with our thinking. Also, it helps us to to open up our beliefs to believe that we can do it. Now, that's the smaller sort of uh, or, uh, element of visualization. What most people think visualization is, is getting really clear about um, what it is that you want. And that is really important. But again, it's not the whole piece. So getting clear about what you want is pretty fundamental, because if you if you don't know that you want something or you haven't chosen something, it's often that it won't come to you. And I've seen this so many times in my life from um, uh, bringing up my children, if I hadn't committed to a decision, it's often that they would fight against it because they could sense that I haven't committed to a decision. Um, and also for myself, and, I, and I've tested this a lot with goal setting. So for many years, every single year, I would, at the, at the end, of, uh, end of the year, would do a re review of the previous year and then set my goals for the next year. And they, I would always achieve them without any effort because I, uh, it was, it was like I had decided that that's what was going to happen, and then life just fell into place. I then stopped and I tested it. Um, I guess it wasn't, it wasn't a, a, a true test. It was um, I was having a lot of change in my life and didn't know which path I wanted to walk down, and so I, I didn't do uh, my goal setting, and. I just floated in that space without a direction. And then once I had made the decision of what I wanted to change and what I wanted to do, then I started again with goal setting and then would achieve them without a, a focus specifically. Um, it was the decision to make the change is huge and we can't underestimate that. So visualizing also helps us with deciding to create something and choosing it. It also gets us in alignment with the energy of that outcome. So at the moment, 
you're sitting in the same you're sitting in your current life and the energy of the things whether that's the health the money the relationships the energy that is uh, supporting those circumstances in order to, to experience something different we have to change we have to one choose something different and then we have to resonate with the things that we're trying to create and that filters into so many different things one of those would be mindset for example if you're trying to um, create wealth it's a really good idea to go and sit in uh, amazing cars whether that's a Ferrari or Lamborghini or a Rolls Royce it's also a great idea to um, to mix in circles with people who have already been there and done that or visit you know multi-million pound houses and that's all about being comfortable and expanding your comfort zone so visualization also gives us a route into doing those things and then the last thing really is trust so uh, when you're visualizing you have to get into um, a state of emotional connection where you feel excited there's no point in just visualizing what it is that you want you have to cultivate that excitement in your body uh, that which is the creation of energy and shifts that and part of that is trusting that it's that it's uh, real trusting that it can come true trusting that it will come true and therefore um, getting into alignment with the belief that that is your reality okay so the final question is I'm struggling to set a routine of meditation and mindfulness what do you think is best to change that um, so this kind of leads me back to where I might find it really difficult to make change and so I often find that um, say for dieting or uh, fasting or doing anything that is quite challenging for me personally um, I do it regularly so again it's I guess it's all um, it's what it's a sense of feeling so I can definitely achieve it I can do it over and over again but it, there's still a hurdle for me to jump through and, and in order for me to get myself over that hurdle I find that I need to set a goal so if I have a goal like an event I'm trying to uh, look good for or I'm trying to detox for a certain reason um, or I have a feeling that I want to achieve in my body or then it's so much easier I've got a reason why I'm doing it and then I can commit to it so a hard deadline is often really helpful if you don't have that then it's about manufacturing that feeling of commitment and excitement and uh, desire for the outcome so for in in that sense i'd recommend you commit to either a 30 a 60 or 90 day challenge um, set reminders initially in your in your calendar in your phone um, put it in your diary and remind yourself of why you're doing it um, and then as you go through make sure that you celebrate those 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 milestones so I think it's it's really important up front to put in the work so that as you go through it's a lot easier so that might be that you tell some of the, your family members every day I'm going to be meditating in the morning please don't come into my room please um, uh, allow me to do XYZ or you fit it into a time zone <clears throat> where the house is quiet and it's easy for you to do and then it's more about you rem you remembering or you you committing to it um, nothing is is hard in this process but it's also not easy um, so it's not hard to uh, to actually make this plan um, it's very easy or rather straightforward to do it but it can be really uh, hard in the moment to force yourself to do something that you don't necessarily want to do so you'll know yourself uh, best and it's about really trying to whether you need the carrot or you need the stick um, so a carrot might be why are you doing it 
what are you looking to achieve? And the stick might be, come on, just just do it. Just force yourself to sit down and, um, and get into the habit. And then take it easy on yourself. So don't, it's not about um, judging yourself. It's not about criticizing. It's actually about having compassion and coming from that place of compassion and self-love and turning it into a self-love practice so it depends on where you're coming it depends on from it depends on your sort of starting mindset as you go into it um, I would try as best to cultivate that sort of compassion and see this as some self-care so that when you're doing it that you can say come on I really deserve this I really uh, want to give myself a treat I really want to look after myself. I really want to thank my body. I really want to um, find that peace and give myself some some love. Okay. Thank you for your questions. Looking forward to um, seeing you next week. Have a great day.